It's no easy task, distilling the entire history of PC gaming into 50 titles that stand head and shoulders above the rest, but every year the editors of PC Gamer magazine did just that. The results were never predictable, always controversial, and 1999 was no exception. Hello and welcome everyone to part 5 of my series where I continue to cover PC Gamer magazine's 50 best games ever from the November 1999 issue as chosen by the editors of the magazine up to that date at the time. This is the first in the series where I provide full voice over commentary. My previous videos in which I cover games ranked from 50 to 31 show gameplay footage only. If you're interested to see how those games ranked, check out the other videos on my channel. However, for a quick look, here is the ranking thus far. To be clear, this is PC Gamer's list, not mine. Bear in mind their magazine writes that some venerated classics didn't make the list because, historical significance aside, they had not worn well over the years, and the older games that did qualify are those that stood the test of time and which remained playable by 1999 standards. Now on to the list, and to kick things off this week, we start with number 30, Duke Nukem 3D. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of gum. Who could forget this, or the plethora of other pop culture zingers that flowed from Duke's mouth with so much aplomb? Never has there been a game with so much attitude, so much over-the-top humor, so many, um, strippers. Duke Nukem 3D took a satirical sideswipe at the whole 3D action genre with an amusing character-driven narrative, sleazy environments and baddies, and a gleefully macho outlook. But the humorous style was just the icing on a very rich cake. Well-designed levels, innovative weapons, a great, for the time, graphics engine, and some killer deathmatching opportunities. Soon surpassed, it was only a matter of time, gamers thought, that Duke would return to claim his crown. Little did they know it would take another 12 years from the time of this publication for Duke Nukem Forever to release in 2011. Number 29, Gabriel Knight, The Beast Within. In the realm of adventures, few games command as much respect as the Gabriel Knight series. The second installment in the supernatural detective franchise, The Beast Within, is remarkable not just as a fine adventure, but also for containing some of the first really effective use of full motion video. With professional writing and performances, devious puzzles, and a great storyline exploring modern werewolf mythology, players finally got to experience an FNB game that felt like you were playing a movie. With her work on this classic, designer Jane Jensen set herself apart as one of the adventure genre's true pioneers. Number 28, Chuck Yeager's Air Combat. In this day and age of jaw-dropping, photorealistic simulation graphics, it's sometimes hard to justify one's enthusiasm for the sims of the past. But all true flight sim aficionados, say that twice, will unflinchingly pay homage to Chuck Yeager's Air Combat, a gem of a game. Sure, it doesn't have terribly realistic flight models or accurate physics, but even hardcore simmers didn't seem to mind. It soared anyway, on sheer, undeniable fun value. Flying missions from World War II through Vietnam, you turn and burn through a series of rip-roaring dogfights, the likes of which have arguably yet to be matched in terms of fun factor. With Chuck himself present to dole out advice, Chuck Yeager's air combat was, and still is, a flyboy's fantasy. Number 27, Alone in the Dark. When gamers enjoy the cinematic pleasures of games like Tomb Raider and Resident Evil, they rarely stop to recognize the game that kickstarted the entire genre, a French design called Alone in the Dark. Using a cinematic 3D graphics engine, players assume the role of intrepid investigator Edward Carnby in an exploration of a mansion that was home to a startling evil. Because the presentation of the adventure was so viscerally immediate and compelling, you held your breath as you rounded each corner. Alone in the Dark was one of the very first computer games to achieve an immersive effect that could compare with the thrills of a motion picture experience while remaining thoroughly interactive. Number 26, Battlezone. If there's a reason why this critically lauded splicing of two dramatically disparate genres failed to ignite at retail, it's that consumers, used to games falling into familiar categories, failed to grasp such an audacious concept, and who can blame them? 
Whoever would have thought that a marriage between real-time strategy and 3D action could even work? But Battlezone not only showed that it's plausible, it opened the door to a whole new breed of gaming that relied as much on forward planning and strategic smarts as it did fast reactions and an itchy trigger finger. A compelling sci-fi storyline, gorgeous 3D engine, and a remarkably powerful interface all helped, but it was the sublime balance of strategic and action elements that made the game such a thrill. If you were among the many who missed out, rectify your mistake forthwith.